What's up guys, welcome back to The Home Slice. I know for all of you, it has seemed like I have been publishing a video every week, but in reality, I was just in the US for about two and a half months and just made it back to New Zealand. And so I had pre-filmed some content and I'm excited to get back into things. And before I get into some of my normal edge tests, I want to share an exciting update with you. Now, I had a friend, his name's Jason, and he is a knife maker, a really good one. Um, and he's made these knives, beautiful little fixed blade EDC, about two and a half inches of edge, extremely thin. And on these particular models that Jason sent me, he had some problems with his stamping machine and his grinder, and so the lettering of CPM 10V and a couple of other things weren't up to his liking, and he just kind of told me, I can't sell them, but I would love my steel tested. Now he's since modified his heat treatment procedure so that it's even better. These are intended to register about 64 or 65 Rockwell. The protocol that he follows, I believe Laren Thomas's protocol, um, is supposed to yield 65 Rockwell on CPM 10V, but because he's a modest guy, he claims only 64. And some of you will recognize this little mini cleaver from a demonstration I did. Now he said, play around with them and see how sharp they are and if you want to modify the edge. Well, on this cleaver, I ended up only stropping on diamond and regular leather, and it was actually bursting on a flat surface through paper towel. And I said, that's good enough for me. I'm happy with that. So we're gonna best test this and see what the sharpness numbers are, and then I'll strop this one, which I haven't stropped yet, this beautiful little leaf-shaped blade and then we'll test that to see if we can get it comparable. And then I thought it would be fun to test his behind the edge thickness that he's put on these things and also see how the factory edge does against the death rope. Later on, we'll try to optimize it and see if we can do even better than this test, but who knows, maybe he's rocking the most optimized edge for this steel. I may have to rearrange the camera a bit to make sure you can see that best number because I've forgotten to do that. But. Okay, cleaver style, 10V EDC, registering at 124. Now, as Roman Case points out, flat edges tend to have a more difficult time snapping the best line because the curve of a curved edge actually optimizes the way that the line wants to move and be sliced by the blade. So we'll check uh, this guy and see just uh, at the moment what it's registering at and see how the factory sharpening would before I touch it and then we'll see if I make it better or worse. One twenty three. Well, nice job, Jason. They're very consistent with one another. I'll go through some stropping and then we will try it again. Okay, we're all stropped up on that. I should mention that both of these were sharpened to 400 grit. Um, that would be FEPA 400 grit on the Neve OCB diamond plates, I believe resin bonded diamond stones and then he did a preliminary stropping of the blades and now I've just done um, a gentle hanging kangaroo strop for edge alignment and cleanup and then some 0.5 micron diamond and cowhide leather and then back to the smooth side of the kangaroo and that is what's been done to these and I should say that Getting in the 120s, in my experience, is a pretty good freehand sharpening. So well done, Jason. I also suspect that these had, he was working on these for a while, and it's possible that 
some things happened to the edge during that, so they may have been even sharper. I think he sent them to me, and they were not sharpened as a last thing. So 82. 82. 82 freehand. Good work, Jason. Come on. Ha ha! All right, so let's visit the death rope. We probably won't do the cleaver for now because flat edges are not optimized for rope cutting tests. We'll find some other fun things to do with that. But um, let's see how we get through the death rope or whether we get through the death rope on this 82 freaking best edge. That's so good. Nice. Oh, I forgot to do behind the edge thickness test. All right, let's see here. It's going miles past at 10. Let's try seven or eight. Way less than that. So my gauge maxes out at seven thousandths, and it is burying the inch by a full millimeter. I would guess that Jason has left this in the vicinity of somewhere in the two to five thousandths behind the edge range, which is absolutely awesome and insane. Jason, you're a madman. Okay, let's try Cleaver. Okay, the Cleaver is um, 10. 10 thousandths behind the edge for the Cleaver probably in the vicinity of five or less for the leaf shape blade. Bro. <laughs> All right, let's see how this death rope goes. Now there's like sand and crud in here. So it's gonna be very impressive if this thing makes it through without chipping on a less than five thousandths behind the edge edge. Now our, our big best contender so far in this particular test has been CPM Magna Cut in a mule wearing a dual grit edge <clears throat> which cut through the rope one time and I don't remember the exact best reading after but it was in the upper kind of 390-ish range just under 397 maybe just under 400. So let's see what this 10V's got at the moment with the edge it's wearing. Okay, well, it started out um, not cutting very fast. I suppose um, maybe I shouldn't have um, done the extra stropping on it because it seems that for this sort of task, uh, this, this task is no respecter of Bess. It is no, this rope is no respecter of alloy or even Rockwell hardness. Now, 
this I think is a fairly similar result to some of the tests that I've done previously in the sense that it started out very keen and then the keen edge gave way to this like just like partially degraded edge where there was enough alloy there that it was making progress like maybe there was some microchips that gave some coarser texture and even now if I hammer away at an area I can get you know, almost you know I just did all that and I, I cut two strands here so it's not entirely done but um, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through the entire rope. It's struggling to initiate new cuts. I'll give it a few more minutes, but I think that I think the good news is, is that maybe I can find a more like lasting aggression oriented edge. Like Jason's edge is phenomenal at 82 best, and it's a shame to ruin such an edge on a monster of a rope like this. Yeah, see that didn't separate any new fibers. Um, <clears throat> it's an amazing edge and it would be like a phenomenal edge in the kitchen, stuff like that, but this this death rope is just a whole different beast. Um, so this will be exciting to see if I can create an edge that chews through that the way that some of the other edges did. Oh, yeah. Yep, okay, I'm gonna call it there. I'm not seeing any new severed fibers. Um, beautiful knife. Well done, Jason. 83 best, sorry I ruined your awesome, awesome edge on this death rope. But I uh, I don't wanna sh like sharpen test, sharpen test so many times with this that I waste the beautiful behind the edge thickness that it's got going on right now. But probably I'll get through some of my other steel testing and narrow down which stones seem to be performing the best and then put a brand new edge uh, on this guy, test three or four of the highest performing edges on this these 10V knives. Almost forgot to do a best test. Let's see how that edge is doing. Now to be honest, it feels like squeaky and rounded, which throughout the past has not always translated to a bad best score. It's like the keen, uh, the keen shape of the edge is still mostly intact. It's just rounded enough that there's not enough aggression to get through the line. So it'll be interesting to see what best number this is still sitting at. I also don't know how behind the edge thickness actually affects best if it makes it better. I'm not sure. So we could be in for a surprise. This could be a reasonably low number considering we just terminated the rope of death test. No, okay, five, 507. Um, that's within the scope of what I would expect. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. That's within the scope of what I would expect from from this test. It's rounded over so it doesn't want to cut through the rope and it doesn't want to easily press through the best filament, but it's not crazy, crazy high, you know? So interesting stuff. More to come. What's up guys? It's just reflecting on the video. I wanted to clarify some things because this is the first time that I have displayed somebody's work is a new a new person and the death rope is quite uh, intense and challenging test and certain things in, in my head are clear but I think that they sometimes bear clarifying because not every one of you will have seen every one of my videos so first off this is not a pure performance test we did not just discover that this person's knives perform poorly in any way um, it's it's actually a lasting edge aggression test. The reason that I do it is because I do dual grit edges and dual grit edges where you sharpen one side coarse and one side fine with certain combinations of stones seem to extend the edge aggression that a knife will have over a longer period of time. So this is not a fail test, this is not a bad test, this is simply an indication that that method of sharpening in which I received these knives is one that lends itself to maximum keenness and smooth slicing feeling 
but not necessarily long lasting edge aggression in CPM10V at this hardness level. I'm not entirely sure if CPM10V will dual grit sharpen well with the stones that I have. I'm not sure which stones will will work best with it. But I wanted to clarify, this is just one test of literally just one thing. It's not the be all end all. And we're gonna do a lot more testing with these knives and I'm sure see some cool characteristics come out of them under the right circumstances with various kinds of testing. So I wanna clarify that. If you wanna see the Magna Cut test, I'll put it on screen now. Otherwise, hey, peace out from the home slice. You guys take care.